Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 544, What is Your Real Age? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to ask the question, what is your real age? We all know that our age is one more year, one more year, we count from the uh, time we're born. And that's how we look at age and how we count it chronologically. But there is another way to look at age, and that age is, what is your health age? How healthy are you? Are you health as healthy as a 25-year-old when you're 50? Or are you 50 and you're as healthy as a 65-year-old? That is the real question when we're f- trying to figure out somebody's health, to see how long they're going to live and how well they're going to live, and with how ha- with how many issues or how many different doctors and medicines that they're going to need to take as they get older. So we know our chronologic age, that's easy. It's a number of candles on our, on our birthday cake. But when we're talking about health age, we have to go to um, a way of measuring that in people. Now there are indirect ways of measuring it, and there are direct ways of merit, measuring it, which means a scientific kind of way of measuring it. But if you wanted to practice this and go to maybe your high school reunion where you know everybody is the same chronologic age, and then look around you, not everybody looks the same. Everybody has had different life experiences. They've had different trials and tribulations. They've, some smoke, some drink, some have used drugs. Some people have earned a living very well. Some people haven't been as fortunate. All of those things actually impact our health age and they make us look a certain way. And if you really want to see the age of somebody, you should look at the texture and the turgor and the, the health of their skin. Their skin reflects how healthy they are and, how, and that's one of the ways we determine, oh, somebody's young, somebody's old, it's by looking at their skin. And it's, the largest, it's our largest organ, and it does reflect how well we, we live and how healthy we are. Now, as we talked about last week, we have um, a genetic blueprint that we're given on the day we're born, and that genetic blueprint has some mistakes in the blueprint, and those mistakes can actually cause us to be at risk for certain diseases. We also talked about the fact that there are certain lifestyle things you can do to turn those bad genes off. And that is something done in the study of epigenetics, EPI genetics, above genetics. So we can turn some of our genes off to make us healthier, and we can turn some of them on to make us sicker. If we drink uh, a bottle of alcohol every day, we are going to make ourselves ill. We are gonna turn on bad genes, turn off good genes. So that's just one very um, uh, big example of how you can destroy your health. Um, one of the ways that medicine looks at health age is we, we use the method of family history. So we ask you all the diseases that are in your family. We determine what diseases you're at risk for, which isn't very specific for you, but it's just the, the diseases that you have in your background that you know about. So family history is one of the ways. And then asking you about toxins you've been exposed to. Have you worked with benzenes or asbestos or other things that can actually get inside your body and change your genes? and make your genes mutate. And those are, those are big. They stay in your body, they live in your fat, and you are exposed to them all the time. We have a lot of 
uh, problems in our environment. Uh, we have a lot of chemicals that act as estrogens, and they then impact our body. So one of the ways they do is that the more we're exposed to and the more fat we have, the more of those uh, toxins we have. Therefore, they are always they are always circulating and always affecting our genes. That puts us at higher risk for mutations and changes in our genes or turning bad genes on. So those are things that uh, affect our health age. And we look like it. If you just look at somebody, you can look at how they walk. If they walk, if their walk is tentative, if it's halting, if it's slow, um, if they're walk looking at the floor the whole time, that's a sign of poor health or being old, how we look at being old. Now there are some people that get old and don't have that issue, and they are very healthy as they get old. They may have a high number on their chronology, but their health age is low. Now, uh, other ways that we can look at, at health ages, if we added in, do you smoke? Have you ever smoked? Do you drink? Have, do you drink more than 10 drinks a week? Uh, we can ask about um, drugs, marijuana, which can age you, because it's just like smoking several cigarettes every time you smoke marijuana. Um, that, and not that that isn't healthy for some people. I'm, I, I have my way out on that. Uh, CBD and marijuana have been used medically, but I'm talking about just overuse of uh, smoked marijuana. Um, if your diet has been terrible, if you're, you don't exercise, you've never exercised, you don't have a lot of muscle mass, those are ways to make your health age worse and make you older than you really are. So somebody who is 35, who has all of these issues, doesn't do any exercise, is overweight, it eats improperly, has lots of bad habits, stays out all night, doesn't sleep, that person is going to actually rate maybe a decade older than somebody who is 35 and eats right and sleeps properly and exercises and um, has less stress in their life. So that's like two separate ages. I can look at two people and say, this person is gonna live a lot longer because he's taking care of himself and he's turning his genes off every day that were bad. And the other person is just throwing, throwing their caution to the wind and ignoring the fact that they could be sick in the future and they're making themselves age quicker. So how do we measure that specifically? And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about today. A more direct way of looking at your health age are two blood tests. One blood test measures um, some material that is on the tail of your DNA, of some of your chromosomes. It measures the length of it. They found that um, these tests um, of, the, of the tail of the DNA, uh, actually, the longer they are, the lower your health age. The shorter they are, the, they're used up, that means the older your body really is and the, the older your body reacts. So that's one way to actually send a blood test and say, you know, what, are, what is the health age of this patient? They also have a new way of doing this called True Age, and you can actually get it on um, Amazon.com, a True Age test for your health age, where you can, you can just punch a hole in your finger and get some blood, blood and send it in, and they'll actually give you a, a, an age that your body is, because they're looking at your genes, and they're looking at what they call methylation of your genes. It's one of those things that if you methylate certain genes that they are healthier and they're turning off the, the epigenetics, with epigenetics, they're turning off your bad DNA. So they can tell if your lifestyle and if your genetics have made you younger than your chronologic years. And that's important because for me as the physician, I wanna know if there's things I have to fix or should I just encourage you to keep doing the same thing you've been doing add your hormones when they go away, add your thyroid when it go, becomes low, um, add vitamin D if you live in the northern part of the United States. I mean, certain things are for everybody, and then certain things, you know, I have to specifically go after people who have a really high 
health age and much higher than their own chronologic age, I have to help fix that and, and bring them back to normal. And the first step, usually for both groups, is to replace hormones when, they're, when they become um, low because of age because everybody's hormones decrease. Their testosterone and estrogen, their growth hormone, their thyroid, their pituitary hormones all decrease with age, and we need to have them stimulated or replaced, and that will bring our health age down. So that's usually our first step. Other steps in measuring health age is how I do my blood tests. I do blood tests for hormone levels, so I can determine whether you need a certain hormone replaced or not, the testosterone, estradiol, growth hormone, thyroid, and adrenal testing. I do blood tests for liver and kidney health. That's important. If, you, if your liver and kidneys aren't healthy, then I need to figure out a way to make them healthy because basically your whole body depends on your liver and kidneys. So we have to use supplements or we have to use diet and exercise or water intake. We have to do something to improve the, uh, the state of your kidneys and liver. If you have fatty liver, that usually is from having insulin resistance or prediabetes and you need metformin, we'll give you a short course of metformin to clear out the fat of, from your liver and it'll decrease your risk of getting diabetes. So it doesn't mean forever, but we do treat with that medication so that we can decrease your risk and decrease your health age by clearing out your liver and getting the fat out of it. So that's another way to uh, measure health. We also look at things like Unhealthy lipids, inflammation, we test CRP. Homocysteine, which if it's high, you can have strokes and heart attacks from soft plaque emboli. So that's important. We look at hemoglobin A1C to see if you have a, um, if you have a risk of diabetes, if you're close to having diabetes, if you already are a diabetic, we can tell by the hemoglobin A1C. That's the average of three months um, blood sugar. We also look at your insulin levels. If they're very high and you have insulin resistance, then you gain a lot of weight without eating much and every bit of carb becomes fat. So that's something that we have to fix or readjust through medication and diet and exercise. So when we do that, we lower somebody's health age. Uh, and lastly, we, we have to look at a blood count. Sometimes the blood count can tell us very little, but it, it tells me about your immune system. Do you have enough white blood cells of each different type? It tells me if you're currently sick. It tells me if your hemoglobin and hematocrit are high enough. If you're anemic, you're not going to be well because you can't carry oxygen to your tissues. If you have too many red blood cells, then your blood's gonna slow down and sludge, just like if you were trying to put push jello through a syringe. It's, it's hard to push thick blood. So we have to draw blood off of those patients who have a very high hemoglobin and hematocrit. Those are all things that have to do with adjusting your health and lowering your health age, making you healthier. Um, two other things we do in our office with, uh, with all of our patients is we, we check a body composition with the in-body machine. And we can tell how much muscle you have and how much fat you have, how much, how much more you weigh than you should, how much weight you should lose, how much fat you should lose, how much muscle you should gain. I mean, there are many people that think that their body composition is normal, but they have very little muscle and a lot of fat. That's not healthy. It has nothing to do with your BMI. It has to do with how much muscle you have, how much fat you have, the relationship between them, and how much you weigh for your height. So all of those things are taken into, into um, account when we're looking at somebody's ability to be healthy. Stress in your life is another problem because it decreases your ability to sleep and it increases your cortisol, which breaks down tissues. Anytime you're breaking down tissues, instead of building tissues, um, let's see, say breaking down tissues more than you're building the tissue back up, that's an aging and unhealthy um, um, mode to be in. So generally testosterone will reverse that and exercise and eating properly. All of those things are necessary. And if you can stay off added steroids because added steroids break down your tissues as well. Um, if you're looking at 
what you can do to help your health age, whether or not you come to see me or not. Um, what you can do is replace your hormones in the most, in the, the most bioidentical way that is not oral. Because oral hormones go through your liver and get changed into a lot of other things and don't really help your health age or your health. So you need to get your estrogen and testosterone in a non-oral way. We use bioidentical hormone pellets that last four months to six months, and those are perfect. There are other systems that some other, pay, uh, other doctors use that we don't particularly um, think are as effective as pellets, so we don't use them, but they still are better than nothing. Um, nutrition, a good nutrition, having a good diet, no junk food, no soda, uh, decrease your caffeine to a reasonable amount, drink a lot of water. I mean, all of the things that you put into your body, that's your fuel. If you look at it as fuel instead of as comfort, enjoyment, um, oh, I need to eat something to get my energy back, all of those things are counterproductive. You need to think of the fuel you're putting in your body. Your body is going to be made of what you just ate. Do you want it to be made of um, Cheetos? I mean, really. That, I mean, it, all that is is chemicals and fat and carbohydrate. I mean, that's not going to get you anywhere except fat. Um, uh, achieving your ideal weight is very important to achieving your, um, your, health, uh, your um, health age. Good exercise, hopefully daily, every other day at the very least, is important. Excellent sleep, which sometimes takes hormones for you to have excellent sleep. But excellent sleep is very important, so getting your sleeping environment uh, to be restful and calming within an hour of going to sleep instead of just falling into bed is very important so that you actually rest through the night. Uh, also, melatonin is good for uh, a natural help for your sleep. Uh, supplements that take place of a perfect diet. Even, I mean, I try to eat right, but I don't always eat right. And so I have to get my vegetables and fruit uh, nutrients from supplements. So I do that. I mean, I will take supplements because I know I can never achieve perfect diet. So on the things that I know I don't eat enough of, I actually supplement with, with um, they're, they're food supplements. They're not controlled. And uh, you should take the things that your doc doctor suggests you take. Uh, there are some things that counter each other. And so you have to have those removed or one of them removed to get the right effect. You don't want to have any cross, uh, cross problems with the medications you take either. Um, medications that decrease your blood pressure are very important. If you are on blood pressure medicine, there's many kinds. If you don't like the kind you're on, don't just stop taking it. Find a type of blood pressure medicine that does not give you side effects and take it. Keeping your blood pressure down is life-saving. It saves you from a stroke. It saves you from a heart attack. It saves you from so many things. It saves you from peripheral vascular disease in your legs and not being a, and neuro, neurologic damage in your legs. I mean, you need to keep your blood pressure normal, and that's very important. Management of stress, get a punching bag. Do something, you know, put up something in your basement. I mean, kick a, a ball against the wall. I mean, something that you get out your frustrations, or maybe it's just talking to your friends. Maybe it's going out to dinner. Maybe it's going on vacation. But do something to decrease your stress. The stress is damaging and can raise your health age. Um, remember to do everything in moderation, and that includes alcohol and food. It does not include drugs, and tobacco. Those are no, no, they should be out. They should be off your diet. You shouldn't have any of that in your body. Those are things that are really going to damage your health age. So the two ways you can have your health age tested is to go to True Age, and it's, it's um, trademarked, T-R-U-A-G-E dot com and order a, a kit where you can find out what your true age is and then you can then go forth and try to become healthier from that age. Or you can pat yourself on the back and say, thank you, God, you gave me good genes and I'm taking care of my body. And I'm going to continue to do that. So it could just be that you're reinforced that you are actually younger years than your chronologic years. And that should be a huge coup to you and you should be 
thrilled that you have done the work and now you have the outcome of it. Um, telomer testing, which is those little tails on the back of your DNA, they are also a good test that you can do in various, there are many different um, companies that actually offer that. They use saliva or blood. And telomer testing is something that can give you the same health age. So it looks at a different thing, but it gives you the same answer. How healthy are you compared to the years you've been on earth? So those are two ways to test it. You have all of the list of all the things you can do uh, to look at your family history, look at your genes, decide how, how bad it is, uh, even without a test. And then you have the things that you can do to clean up your life and make you have a much lower health age. Everyone wants to look younger, healthier, um, better. And in our society, looking better is looking younger. And being at a lower health age than your chronologic years will make people scratch their heads and wonder how old you are. And that's always fun. So um, please uh, listen and follow, follow the directions so that you can be healthy too. We'd love to see you in our office, but you can follow our advice without coming to our office or with your doctor if you discuss it with them. Please read our book, The Secret Female Hormone for Women, and read our book, Got Testosterone for Men. We also would love for you to um, subscribe to our HealthCast and like us on uh, YouTube if you do like us, if you did like our talk today. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.